In 2014, the biggest arcade hopper since Frogger was released. Crossy Road. A light-hearted and short mobile game with voxel graphics, with the tagline, Why did the chicken cross the road? In Crossy Road, the player's goal is to move a chicken forward to gain score while faced with various procedurally and endlessly generated obstacles that bar their path, such as cars, trains, trucks, and lakes. In this video, we're aiming to, critically, evaluate Crossy Road. We'll accomplish this by first using a model from Robert Zubek, a game designer, developer, and author of Elements of Game Design 2020, previously working at studios such as Zynga, Three Rings Design, and, most notably, EA. The Zubek model is a model that describes the three elements of a game as mechanics, gameplay, and the player experience. No. Mechanics are defined as the rules, objects, and actions that make up the basic activities of the game. In Crossy Road, a basic mechanic would be moving the chicken forward, backwards, left, or right, and another mechanic would be moving forward to increase the score. However, there are also mechanics that deter the player from a high score. Obstacles. There are road sections where the player has to navigate oncoming traffic. If cars, trains, trucks, or the like are touched, it causes an instant game over. There are also lake sections the player has to clear by jumping across lily pads and moving logs. If the player falls into the water, it also causes a game over. Both sections are occasionally broken up with patches of grass, which act as rest spots, but stay for too long and that causes a game over as well. However, these breaks become less frequent as the player gains a higher score. These mechanics add conflict, which is an essential part of what keeps players engaged, as stated in Game Design Workshop 2019 by Tracy Fullerton. Gamers seem to enjoy making difficult decisions to navigate obstacles, which creates a sense of tension, but strangely, only with the absence of yellow paint, cited from many discussions on the internet. Though from these mechanics, we can see that the majority of player interaction is made up of many simple decisions that are made increasingly faster as score increases. This leads us into gameplay, which in Zubek's model, occurs when players interact with mechanics. The player choosing when and which direction to move in to avoid vehicles in Crossy Road would be gameplay. If you still don't get it, we can use a real-life analogy. For example, knowing that expired milk will make you sick is a mechanic. Drinking it anyway is a gameplay choice. Salen and Zimmerman, game designers, suggest that games should be designed with meaningful play in mind. What this means is that when a player makes a decision, they should be able to see that it had an impact on the game, and that the decision fits into the game as a whole. When players clear long and difficult sequences with fast and optimal gameplay, it is immediately discernible that they've obtained more score. These sections become more frequent the higher the current score, further testing player skill. These continuous small W's that are integrated into the gameplay could be a factor as to Crossy Road's extreme success in 2014. A game in years past following a similar formula Flappy. would be Flappy Bird. But is this formula truly sustainable? Are the decisions that are being made consistently interesting for the player? This leads us into the player experience, which is described as the player's subjective experience of the gameplay. World-renowned gamer Dan TDM cited this game as addicting, stating that it's more strategic than Frogger, with greater possibility for outplays, even coming forward to say, "The art style, the sounds, just everything is perfect. It really is. Let's go." However, Crossy Road isn't perfect. Brian Upton, designer of Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon, suggests various design heuristics that act to make games interesting. The heuristics we want to focus on are variety and satisfaction. Movement and terrain in Crossy Road is very simple and effective, however, it is not very variable. Although terrain is randomly generated, after time, players will find themselves repeating the same movement patterns over and over again. This limits the design heuristic of variety, stating that actions should not be repeated. Furthermore, obtaining new high scores is desirable, but there will eventually be a limit. The players will achieve a high score that seems unbeatable, and achieving it will seem unobtainable, and then undesirable. Limiting the design heuristic of satisfaction, which states that desirable outcomes should be attainable. What this means for the player experience is that, overall, Crossy Road feels nice to play and is a fun but challenging game that you can play along with your friends when you have the extra time. Which is to say, it evokes half of the eight game pleasures made by Mark LeBlanc game designer, and then paraphrased by Jesse Schell, which is derived from his book, The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses, by Jesse Schell, of Shell Games, who made Toon Town Online. Of the eight responses, Crossy Road evokes sensation through sound effects and visuals. Challenge. 
through navigating difficult sections to obtain new high scores. Fellowship through sharing high scores in a social circle and competing to beat friends' scores. And submission as a pastime. Okay, guess I'll just kill myself. However, both challenge and fellowship are eventually lost as high scores increase and become less attainable. The challenge to obtain a higher score eventually becomes frustrating, and once a social group gives up on beating the highest score in the group, they move on. However, when analyzing Crossy Road, we can't only look at how it plays, because something we have to consider is that there are various factors outside of the gameplay that affect the player experience. Zubek's model fails to capture this, which is a flaw that Zubek himself acknowledges. In order to properly evaluate Crossy Road, we have to take these factors into account. So, let's examine Crossy Road's story. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side, but what does this really mean? One theory supported by many great minds is that they want to reach the other side of the road. However, throughout the chicken's journey, they reach the other side of the road many times, but still they continue. So the other side of the road couldn't be what the chicken desires. What is their purpose? I have a second theory. When people say the other side, what comes to mind? The afterlife. Or from what we can infer from the gameplay, the goal of the game is to drown, or be eaten alive, or be a victim in vehicular chicken slaughter. Our goal is to keep moving forward, as the score itself compels us to. Debunking the theory that the chicken is clinically de we call that emergent storytelling. We can find another hint in the game's title. Crossy Road. Cross. Christianity. The chicken wants to reach the other side, which is presumably heaven. So, if they want to reach heaven, where are they now? I would like to put forward the argument that a chicken does not have the capacity to sin, so they're not in hell, and they do not have the ability to believe in God, so they are not in heaven. So that only leaves one option. The chicken has died and is stuck in limbo, destined to forever move forward just to find themselves back where they started. At the start of the crossy road, Another factor for Crossy Road's widespread success is its inherent charm. The moment you open the game, the aesthetics of Crossy Road make it apparent that it's a light-hearted, casual, and family-friendly game. This is illustrated in the many skins that Crossy Road has, with a portion being references to pop culture such as Psy Gangnam Style, which the Zubek model fails to address with its focus on pure gameplay. Skins act as another way to keep players engaged, coming back every day to receive the daily gift of coins which can be used to randomly roll on the gacha banner. Some skins even drastically change the game, such as the Pac-Man skin. Even if the gameplay eventually gets stale, players may keep coming back for the promise that they may obtain squares that are of a higher quality than the squares that they already have. I know that in 2014, I was ecstatic when I finally attained the coveted Doge skin after trying for so long, and immediately went to show it off to my social circle. Though all things considered, one half of Hipster Whale, Matt Hall, stated in an interview that Crossy Road was a game you'll play a bit with your friends, try and get the highest score, and then you'll leave. Which is conveyed when playing the game, but harder to convey when critically evaluating a game using a model that can't capture everything it entails. Furthermore, it would be important to note that Crossy Road released on mobile, allowing it to reach a wide audience contributing to its success, which Zubex model also does not account for. Using rigid models in general makes it difficult to evaluate games as you become unable to discuss what makes a game truly special, which is why we should employ the method most game reviews on the internet use and make it up. Who cares if you're wrong? You're online. No one's going to hurt you. Overall, Crossy Road was a social craze in 2014 due to its simple mechanics and gameplay as it was designed to be a casual, accessible, and fun mobile arcade experience. As players continue to play the game, eventually it loses its charm. Users get bored and they move on. However, this doesn't mean that Crossy Road didn't fulfill its purpose. It in fact succeeded. The game is simple, lighthearted, silly, and ultimately fun. It was never designed to retain audience engagement for more than a few minutes at a time or a few years overall. It was just a casual arcade hopper to pass the time. A niche genre in which Crossy Road excels. Now, no evaluation would be complete without ranking the game on a scale of 1 to 10, which people can use to skip the entire video. So without further ado, 7.8 out of 10. There's too much fucking water. Guess I'll just kill myself.